Greetings, my esteemed audience. I am checking in from the Forest of Enlightenment. I'm checking in with some more insights since I already humbled myself, admitted my grave mistakes. I thought to admit to some more mistakes, and uh, yeah, with the hope that you will learn something from my um, from my many mishaps over all of these years. Now, first and foremost, I would like to say again, um, massive. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The outpour of support seeing the latest video, uh, yeah, truly means the world to me. So uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, now I am no longer as much on the back foot. I am uh, already gaining some height so that I don't fall into the sea like Icarus. So yeah, it feels absolutely great and I will um, Definitely honor the trust you have placed in me to continue the good holy work. So uh, yeah, it feels good um, It felt of course both good and bad to humble myself and uh, Admit to these mistakes as I talked about in the latest video, but uh, yeah, I think it's for the um, For the best to admit when you've made some mistakes so that others can learn and so that you can be you know have a great reset in yourself and uh, you know um, feel the um, feel a sense of urgency it's always good a sense of urgency that's a good lesson now secondly i said in the latest video that it was a plebeian trait to wear muted colors now i said that in a joking way now of course some of my favorite garments are actually in gray such as the the aforementioned cardigan i um, add some color with this sensitive poets merino wool scarf as well so you can do that but yeah when i train also i prefer gray actually so uh so yeah it was um it was not meant to roast anyone uh since i would roast myself then as well and yeah it was said with a smile and uh, you know plebeian it's not necessarily something bad so um yeah anyway i like all colors including gray and uh, black and white and everything like that so anyway moving on to the to the main uh, topic at hand. I will say also the following that I do have a very good and intelligent astute Fan base the core audience that is I'm not saying this to flatter myself because flatter is insincere and uh, Praise is sincere. So I'm praising myself. I'm praising my own audience. I'm doing this to mention the following that I can get away with um, some things which Perhaps if you are a content creator, perhaps if you're working in metapolitics, perhaps you can't get away with it because your audience, maybe your, you know, your target audience is a bit younger guys who aren't as astute, then perhaps you can't get away with some things. So what I'm talking about now is when I mention certain things, I can only suppose that the, the guys in my audience, they know what I'm talking about and I can count on the my core audience to listen to my entire video or, re or read my entire book review or whatever it might be so i can count on that and that is a luxury but you shouldn't suppose that everyone is like that so i have that luxury but even so i still have to be careful with uh being very precise in what i mean and uh, also we come into this the topic of using clickbait so to use an example a few years ago this was back in 2015 when the uh, migration mass migration it really kicked off and everyone was okay this is uh, the future is looking quite chaotic what to do what to do everyone was a bit um you know anxious of the future which is normal it's good it would be strange if you weren't anxious of the future that means only that you're not thinking too much about the future now of course you should live in the now focus on the next day but it's also normal to be a bit a bit worried about the future i made a different video about it you can check it out now anyway i made a video titled steroid advice for the coming time the the content of my message the the message itself in the video it was to not take steroids because it will not be good for your long-term hormonal health so that was the main message of the video now i've heard in years since guys liars of course if you lie you reduce your own hamnya your karma and it will come back to bite you i assure you so never lie uh, anyway some liars they misrepresented my work saying that the golden one encouraged people to take steroids he gave advice on how to take steroids but that is absolutely not 
that is absolutely not true. That is not what I did. What I did was to encourage people to not take steroids. I did it in a clickbaity fashion. Now, in retrospect, I'm happy I did because maybe I saved a few young guys, a few sensitive young men from, you know, disrupting their own hormonal balance. But anyway, the point is that sometimes you have guys, maybe more impulsive guys, less intelligent guys, they will only read the title and then they will pass judgment upon the title. So keep that in mind in whatever media you might um, you know, do. So video title, uh, blog post title, if anyone writes blogs anymore, I don't know. We can hope for a return of the blog. Uh, but anyway, the many guys, they don't actually take the time to read a full article or listen to a full um, video or whatever. So they will make their so they will make their judgment even before. So keep that in mind that you are, uh, if you do a clickbait video, make sure to at least not be completely misleading. Now I I wasn't misleading because the the title actually matched the um, the message in my video. So steroid advice, the advice is to not take steroids. So anyway, that was um, one example that you can keep uh, keep in mind that some people they don't watch your entire take they will just they will just take something and then spread it on so something else uh, that I've talked about in at least one video before is my um, uh, the reception of my book reviews now again I have an astute audience but even so I've seen every once in a while that the the response it comes directly so when you delve into matters of magic and metaphysics spirituality sooner or later you will stumble upon the name of Alistair Crowley now I've reviewed one book by him wasn't particularly good uh, I've read one book about him by Tobias Churton you can read both book reviews on my page the golden one dot se now the the reaction the immediate reaction from some people was okay Alistair Crowley is bad. Yes, I never said he was good. He's the opposite of my own teachings because he was a, an enthusiast of drugs and of course I am very much against recreational drugs. Um, so that should have been obvious but some of these individuals they viewed it as an endorsement that I endorse Alistair Crowley because I read a book by him or about him. So that is something you know, same theme really here that people only look at a split second and then they will make up their mind. So the golden one endorses Alistair Crowley because he has a picture of a book by him. Now, of course, I post a picture of the book so people know the book I'm referring to, which I'm reviewing. Now, anyway, something to keep in mind as well is that you have in certain cases, many guys, they don't take the time to actually read the review maybe they will find that I disavow the entire work or maybe they don't but they'll just say that you shouldn't you shouldn't read Alistair Crowley because you will be corrupted by his thought you should have more confidence in me I assure you I will not become an, an enthusiast of drugs just because I read the uh, uh, read some stories about um, a spiritual seeker who took a lot of drugs so anyway the teaching there is to be um, be mindful uh, now you shouldn't you know, reduce your own work to accommodate for the, the guys who are more impulsive and who can't keep uh, attention for more than a few seconds. But I'm mean, saying that if you, you can be careful with, uh, with what you put out so that there is no um, confusion as to your, um, uh, your views. Now, moving on to another thing you can keep in mind, and that is to be very very precise with everything you say so a common mistake I've made myself guilty of this mistake as well is that you you suppose that everyone knows what you're talking about so for example I went into the the great crusade in the immaterium I went in from the perspective of a, a fitness guy the the YouTube channel it started as a fitness channel so I knew from the start that everyone who is here they do understand that a lot of things what we're talking about it's about getting to perfecting our physiques to get a bit stronger in the gym to look a bit better to be a bit healthier everything like that i went in with that attitude but then when i started talking about politics i was met with many individuals who they asked okay but do you need to 
flex and pose a minute in the introduction of each video. Now of course in retrospect it, perhaps I did it too much, I don't know and perhaps it was a bit autistic of me to do it in uh, completely political videos. Uh, some guys asked okay wh why are you posing like this but for me uh, again maybe it was a mistake on my part I should have been more serious I don't know but I did it because that was completely um, in tune with what you're supposed to do if you're talking about fitness to show your own hard work okay you can listen to me because I'm, I'm jacked uh, so uh, but anyway the the teaching here is that you shouldn't always suppose that everyone knows what you know same thing if we're talking in even in later times you have if we're talking about metapolitics now you have boomers they have lived in they grew up in for example in a homogenous Sweden they have worked in they take they live in a Swedish area they take their car to their work with Swedish colleagues then they don't really see what's going on so they don't know what is going on in schools that you know native Swedes are being harassed by non Swedes etc they have no idea because they haven't seen it now of course when I make this video in 2024 there is no, really no excuse but if we turn back time 10 years there were a lot of boomers who they simply didn't know what was going on because no one had perhaps told them they hadn't seen with their own eyes so there is the the risk when you reach out to a new audience that they simply don't know what you're talking about and even now even as I make this video in the year of glory 2024 there might be individuals who they don't know that there is a great replacement going on of European people in our own nations. It might be fully possible. So it's good to sometimes just give um, a few seconds, a minute of background. So when I talk about Swedish politics next time in a video, I will say that I will just give one minute background. Okay, Sweden used to look like this, now it doesn't, and this is because of this and that, and here is the solution, repatriation, uh, and everything like that. So it's good to give a bit of a bit of background and to not suppose that everyone knows what you know. So this can be in, um, to use another example, uh, as I mentioned in the latest video as well, talking about polyester underwear. Now, I wouldn't wear polyester underwear for anything uh, because I know it's not good to have that much plastic down there. Now I use polyester in in some instances so when I train MMA for example I can have a polyester rash guard because it's you know only only one two hours of training and then I take it off it protects me against you know various um, skin ailments etc but you shouldn't wear polyester underwear. Now four years ago I actually had a pair of polyester underwear I had them on, they were really comfortable, but now of course I know better than I didn't know. So even someone as enlightened as myself, if I may be so bold, only a few years ago I made such a blunder. So I'm saying to you now that okay, don't wear polyester and again of course check out the Legio Glory underwear if you want to have some organic cotton ones. But the point here is that it's good to be humble, it's good to yeah, as I said, do not suppose that everyone knows what you do, so it can be good with some repetition as well. And since we are on this particular topic, it can also be good to say why. So always include a why. Why isn't it good to have polyester underwear? Yes, because it can alter your hormonal balance in your body. It's not good with too much exposure to plastics. It can lower your testosterone, so that's the reason for it. Why isn't it good with mass immigration from the third world into Sweden? Yes, because the society deteriorates to a big Gotham city. So it's always good also to give a why to everything. Again, I've been guilty of this. I only supposed that everyone understood that it was good to train, it was bad with mass immigration, it was bad with pornography, all of this. But if you want to communicate effectively, if you want to reach new people and you know make a compelling argument, a good argument that will actually get them to think, do include a why in it. So I say to you, stop watching porn because it lowers your willpower in your brain. So I'm including a why, it took me a few seconds to mention that why. So keep that in mind as well, that people don't know what you know and sometimes it can be good to explain why they should do something because that also helps with the memory. Now moving on to a related note it's good to be very precise with your message. So if I say the Sweden Democrats are good, they are an anti-immigration party. Now 
most of you, of course, my astute audience members, the intelligent and astute among you, you will understand what I mean when I say anti-immigration. It means replacement level mass migration from the third world. That is what I'm against. I'm not against immigration. So if you, if you are a Dutchman, you move to Scotland for whatever reason. Technically, you're an immigrant. Does anyone have an issue with it? No, no one has an issue with it. Uh, we understand this, of course, so if we say that mass immigration is an issue, uh, but what we mean is simply that replacement level mass immigration from bioculturally distant places, that's a recipe for catastrophe. We understand this, but we should also be mindful that there might be individuals who don't understand this. They don't understand because maybe they are they have been doing something else their entire lives and then they come into politics, metapolitics, and they want to know why why we are concerned about the demographic replacement. So be very specific in everything you say. So don't say I'm anti-immigration because that's not what you are probably. Uh, you are probably like me, you know, against the the replacement level migration, but we're not against immigration. Same thing if someone says, these individuals, they don't like brown people. Now, this is also very misleading. I'm saying that I don't want to be replaced in my own population. That does not mean I have anything against a brown man in Indonesia going about his life. So this is important because I might want to visit Indonesia one day to look at uh, ancient architecture because I'm interested in history. Same thing as enthusiasts of the greatest podcast will know. I want to go to Samarkand to look at mosques. So if someone says this guy is anti-Islam, anti-Muslim, that is not true. I'm simply against a mass immigration from third world countries in to Sweden. Some of these countries, they happen to be Muslim, but the point is that I want to be very, very specific to avoid any misconceptions. So be specific in everything you do so you don't get into uh, an argument even with a smug liberal who says oh but are you against immigration how come this is okay so they have tried to trap you they try to be clever um, they try to score points you of course know exactly what you're doing so to use an example which I've actually stumbled upon actual people saying this uh, in in my own life. So back in the day, back in the 90s in Sweden, there was a Swedish guy who said, I want to move to Iceland because they have no immigrants there. And then the smug liberal would say, oh, haha, but then you are an immigrant. But everyone knew what he meant. He didn't want to be harassed by non-whites anymore. That's why he wanted to go to Iceland. And then the smug liberals, they wanted to play a word game saying that, oh, haha, you're an immigrant yourself. So that's a good reason to be very, very specific with your uh, your argument. And that also, you know, helps you not get into other issues. So I have, again, no desire to have any sort of disharmony, discord with um, a solid family father in Indonesia going about his business. I don't want him to think that I dislike him just because I'm against mass immigration into uh, into Europe or to the to Australia or wherever. So it's good to be very, very specific when you're talking. So to not get your enemies in a chance to score a point on you or whatever it might be. So be specific and you will avoid a lot of misconceptions. And also if you want to attract um, people to your view of thinking, you have to be specific. You have to say, I'm against this and this is what I want to do. I want to repatriate all criminals and everyone who's been on social service for over two years or something like that. That is what most people can also agree on. It's nothing controversial. So when you actually put it like that, then most people will agree. But if you let the your opponent, so some sort of journalist, portray you instead, they will say, oh, this guy is only a hater or whatever. So you need to be very precise with your own messaging. Now, on a related note also when it comes to these labels, I'm quite hesitant to label myself. I always say I'm a European gentleman, and that's it. So therefore I conduct myself in, hopefully, I hope I conduct myself in a gentlemanly fashion. I do try at least, and then I say that I'm European, so therefore I stand for European well-being. I work on behalf of European civilization. It's quite simple stuff indeed. Now, when you talk about, which I have done, by the way, so I'm guilty, I'm admitting my mistakes here. When you talk about left-wing, right-wing, there are individuals still who might think in terms of left-wing being for the people, you know, good welfare, good 
hospitals, everything like that, and they view right wing as some sort of crony capitalist um, bad individuals. So there is that for me and for most of you, especially if you're a bit younger, you probably view you probably view right wing as normal, healthy, natural values and you view left-wing as anti-white hatred. So when I say leftist, I mean someone who is against the family, against European civilization, against order for criminality, for degeneracy, everything like that. So when I say left-wing, it's more of a philosophical position, but there might be, especially older guys who have been, you know, a working class guy their entire life, they're a bit older now, and they, they really don't like, you know, some crony capitalists taking advantage of workers, which I fully sympathize with, by the way. So it can be good to be precise there as well that when I say I'm against leftist because I'm against the, the communists in the Spanish Civil War raping nuns and burning churches. That's what I'm against. I'm against leftists now working for open borders because it spells disaster for my own people. So it's really important to be always very specific, very precise with your message. Now, something to keep in mind as well is that sometimes you have to, you can't cater to everyone at the same time. Sometimes it's good to have a message for an intended audience, a specific audience, and many of my videos are this way, by the way. So I know that there are many guys who, you know, their their brains on liberalism, so they don't understand the appeal of your know, mental image of a questing knight going through a going through a thick forest in search of the Holy Grail. They will not be attracted to that image at all. They can't use it in their own quest for self-overcoming. And then I have guys who know exactly what I mean. They're immediately drawn to that image because it's something deeper within us. So this goes into biology and uh, the bio-spirit as well, the race of spirit, the race of soul, as Julius Evola talks about. So sometimes you just have to acknowledge the fact that you can't uh, appeal to everyone with a certain message and many of the videos I've made I've made specifically to an audience where the guys are like myself they are attracted to certain ideals certain imagery and then you just have to yeah deal with the fact that you have some uh, liberal some smug liberals who don't understand and you can never convert them to your way of thinking because they don't have the biology for it and this is, by the way, something I like with having my The Greatest Podcast, is that I know everyone who is there, they already have a base understanding of my goals, uh, our goals, our worldview, so I don't need to be... I don't need to spend so much time talking about fundamental stuff, so you're already on uh, a certain path. So this is also when we're talking about spiritual matters, esoteric matters, that you have the the esoteric guys who have a certain appreciation for something deeper and higher and then you can speak exoterically to the individuals who uh, who perhaps don't have that uh, that sense of uh, of the divine so anyway that's a different topic but the point here is that it's good to be precise and to explain things but sometimes it's also necessary to just accept the fact that some people will not understand uh, what you're talking about so my training videos for example i know full well that Many guys, they come in to look at my training videos and say, oh, this narcissist is posing in the forest again and it's self-aggrandizement and what have you. I understand this. It might seem strange for someone who doesn't train himself, but I know they're appreciated by individuals who train, so they understand. So they, the videos, they are meant to be seen by the guys who are also training. So I hope that was somewhat insightful and informative and... Um, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Thanks again so much for all your support. Uh, do check out all the links in the description box below if you haven't already. I can warmly recommend all the links, of course, because I, it's my own stuff and I'm my own most loyal customer. And uh, yeah, good times. I will talk to you in the next video. XOXO, boom!